You know, a lot of boxing fans tend to call Anthony Joshua a very soft guy, despite his accomplishments. Yeah, and even though he recorded some very shattering losses in his career, I don't know, is it because he's good looking to some ladies, but this shouldn't remove, you know, his chances. I see why they try to hype, you know, Francis Agano up as the better boxer, forgetting dude was in UFC, you know, and hasn't had enough boxing experience to dominate his space. And I even think these thoughts are even shown on how fans bet against, you know, they bet against Joshua. Such fans include, I think, superstars like Drake. Um, and, you know, and now most of them have lost their bets because, I mean, at the end of the day, Joshua came up triumph. So let me pick out some very important discussions around the dynamics of um, Joshua's victory over Francis Zagano and why, you know, some people and some kind of opinions people have in the boxing community. For example, number one, the perception versus the reality of Anthony Joshua is very important. You see, Anthony Joshua's career, you know, he's been marked by impressive accomplishments, including, you know, he's held multiple heavyweight titles in his you know on his belt and i know some segment of boxing fan base would say we'll criticize him for being too soft maybe because he point you know he probably fights without the kind of aggression they expect or probably because of his good looks and you know the perceived lack of aggression and in the, in, in the ring you get me but it's not about that you know the perception people need to overlook um, those things and focus on his skill his determination and his ability to adapt his style to different opponents, you get my point. So I think that is one thing people should look at. And on jo- um, Ngano's transition to boxing, it, people forget that Francis Ngano's dominance in the UFC heavyweight division it was largely attributed to his devastating punch and power, and you know his ability to finish f- fights quickly. I mean, that guy had like out of twenty, is it out of twenty-one or twenty fights, he had seventeen, you know, wins and things like that, and most of them came from knockouts. So, however, you know, when you transition to professional boxing, you, you are presented with a new challenge and Ngano may not have fully addressed them, you know, these challenges. So, while his raw athleticism, you know, and strengths, are, are, they are undeniable assets, actually. But they may not be sufficient enough for him to excel in the technical aspects of professional boxing, guys. That's actually very certain. And yeah, a whole lot of people are worried about Drake's gambling habits. I don't think you guys should actually because Drake um, said he, he staked $615,000. That's almost a million on the fight. And he was in favor of um, Francis. Actually, lost the fight at the end of the day. I mean, inevitably, you can see Joshua won. And the whole lot are worried that maybe Drake has a whole lot of gambling habits because, or obsessive gambling habits, because people believe that he stakes a whole lot of you know money on matches professional matches and the rest of it and sport matches you guys forget that drake is actually multi-millionaire and um i don't think of course i believe that drake has professional advisors finance advisors accountants who help him handle his has- assets and everything so i think drake is actually very rich you guys should not worry i don't think he's gambling the right way i think gamblers should be people who have enough money and their spare car should be used to gamble and you guys should not even believe everything you see online because it might actually mean that even drake maybe drake owns the sticking company stick that company the platform maybe he owns it and he's just running all these things as pr and stuff but yeah and maybe to drive audience traction to the platform but yeah six hundred and fifteen thousand. you win some you lose some so you guys should not be worried about drake's gambling habit i think you guys should focus on you more drake is a multi-millionaire owns a private jet and stuff i don't care what i partnering with people to make this happen but the point the most important thing is things are not how you think they are another thing is you know celebrities involvement in sports betting you know people like drake they are high profile sticks and you know how they bet on ngano and the rest of it and all that kind of sporting matches i think these things just add, they add an extra layer of excitement and attention to you know high profile matches but it's essential that you guys recognize that um you know celebrity bets they're primarily driven by maybe personal preferences um financial gain sometimes but you know when it's potential financial gain and it's more it's more than those it's more of those things than you think they are and um instead of you taking some of these bets as an informed assessment of a fighter's abilities or the likely outcome of success in the match you gave me no and another thing i want us to talk about is joshua's victory as a statement because you know joshua went into that ring with determination i mean the guy had a whole lot to lose 
um francis may have actually scared fury a bit but trust me joshua this fight means a lot more for joshua than um, francis that's his reputation as a boxer so guy i'm sure he came with a sheer will and ferocity so despite being underestimated by some fans and you know anthony joshua has the decisive approach to the fight and victory i think it serves as a powerful statement of his skill and determination and, and you know joshua is a very strategic boxer and you know it also calls to question the fact that people need to know that technical proficiency smartness sometimes will always outweigh muscle yeah and i think it was beautiful to see that he executed a very great game plan ultimately proved you know it, it that's a decisive factor so i think this victory should reaffirm um, joshua's status as one of the top heavyweight champion boxers in the world right now so some of the lessons you guys may have learned is that number one in Ghana's transition you guys should not forget his transition to boxing uh, I, I, I like how it was met it was met with a whole lot of hype met with a whole lot of anticipation and curiosity however his limitation and the sports are so evident and I, I mean evident even in the fight with Joshua I, I think it also emphasizes the importance of experience technique and IQ in boxing and even in any sport or even in any activity and I think it also attributes that um, Joshua has honed the skill throughout his career and Ghana's journey into boxing I think he also highlights the challenges faced by athletes when they're crossing from one sport to the other and for you know someone like Ngano is just from one combat sport to another and I think it's also a valuable lesson for future contenders so anyway in conclusion I believe that Joshua's victory uh, over Ngano I think it goes beyond the mere boxing march I think also challenges prevailing stereotypes and perceptions of our boxers. Uh, it highlights, you know, you can see the complexities of transitioning. It's not easy. I mean, somebody who is a king on water might not be a king on land. Somebody who is a king in air might not be a king on land. So uh, it's just the fact that at the end of the day, someone might still experience skill and specialization will always win at the end of the day if you guys look at it so ladies and gentlemen let me know what you guys think and for people who are worrying about drake's gambling habits come on man at the end of the day everything doesn't it's not how they seem thank you let me know what you guys think in the comment section do not forget of course to subscribe like and share um these are very important things that help us grow see you soon cheers